trolling Facebook today and noticed a fellow B body owner was having some coolant issues, keeping his car cool, and realized I'd had a lot of the same problems. So I was going to detail what I had to do to get my deal dealt with. So we're gonna fast forward through most of the stuff and go to the reason why I'm making this video. Um, this is a Mercedes Benz, I believe it's a C-Class fan. And you don't really recognize it because I took the fan motor, the blade, and the control module and uh, pretty much threw away the rest of the, the stock housing that it came with. I manufactured something that fits nicely on my Be Cool radiator uh, that's for the B-body. It's the bigger one of the two. It requires that you mount it to the frame rail and move your battery tray a little bit, but it works pretty good. It's huge. Um, this current one, this is, many of the Sharp Eyed B-body owners will notice that this is a stock fan shroud for a B-body. So what I'm looking at here is I literally just took some, I don't know if that'll show well, this does. I took some angle iron and I kind of fastened it over the case the outer case and uh, where the aluminum radiator sat in the car after it sits on the frame rails, I put a couple of these. These go up and engage the core support. It's not perfect, but it works really well. And then I just put a couple of these cross supports in here in a way that they would line up and engage the factory Mercedes fan. They had to drill and tap a couple spots on the, on the mounting gears of the fan, but it worked just fine. And if you space this out correctly, it doesn't touch the radiator, which is probably something you, you should know. The control module, um, I had to secure to the, the mounting bracket. And this is a, this is a you must have this. Um, uh, it, it does run some pretty high amp wire. Uh, I've got some big, I think it's eight wire to this guy. And I run it through a relay, which, yeah, there it is. I run it through this relay here that is directly off of the alternator stud. Cause that's where you grow, where you draw your good high amperage stuff. And uh, when the car is on, it engages the, the ignition wire energizes this post and it engages this and it energizes the fan. The reason I'm saying that is that if you don't wire this PWM pulse width modulation, you can wire this without a pulse width modulation brain and it will just kick on when you energize it. And now it goes full on and this thing is a beast. Uh, but you gotta pick your poison. If you're overheating, you won't um, and you'll need a beast alternator to run it, but it works and it fits in nicely and it's, uh, I'm gonna stand this up. And you'll see it doesn't stand proud of the shroud at all. Um, yeah, there's some area around it that isn't covered by the stock fan either. So, I don't know, it, it's fine with me and it worked just fine. This, this particular setup pulled me through Power Tour last year. I say pulled, you almost feel the car move when you turn this thing on. So um, I'm gonna take care of some things today. I didn't have this. I mean, it did fine without this, but I'm gonna go ahead and seal that off. And this seals up nicely to the radiator. So eh, it, it does fairly well. I'll leave a link or a picture in the video that shows this guy in the car and uh, the Amazon, you know, uh, a link. I don't know if it's a link or what it is, but it describes a fan. I think I got 180 bucks in the fan and, and the shroud I already had. I had to modify the shroud just a, just a little bit in a couple spots, but ultimately it is a largely stock B-body radiator shroud for, I think this is a 26 inch core support. Um, and and it, I couldn't ask for a better fan. Uh, I'm running it pulse width modulation off my Mega Squirt, which tells it to slow down some. It'll run it at half speed. Uh, if you guys are really getting into that, that's fine. But it, it, turning it on when the car is running, you, it, it runs full speed and it won't overheat. So there you go. There's my fan set up. This is the fan I'm using. And here's a good detail of the back of the motor. You can see the motor mounts those three ears that come off of it. 
Uh, I took the fan blade off and you can see those uh, mounting points from the front and just unscrew it and take it out. And the same goes for the, oops, same goes for the mounting of the control module. It just unscrews and comes loose. Uh, then I had to drill and tap those uh, ears to accept hardware, which wasn't a big deal. And then I just mounted it to a case uh, that I made. So I think that saved me time in the long run. I spent a lot of time trying to make the original work and it wasn't necessary. Um, these guys here, I went through some grief on finding how they were mounted. Uh, I'll have a detail here in a second for that. So here's the battery tray. Uh, I'll show you the difference uh, in the tray itself here in a second. But this is the factory location for it. And you can see the holes that line up. Uh, I'll wind up buying another one. This one was kind of butchered anyway. So I went ahead and hacked it up and used it as a template. But if you can see uh, the hack I took out of the corner, if you look straight down, it makes more sense. That gives us room for a radiator, and I took a little chunk out of the corner there for something else, but uh, really, uh, that's the battery tray. Now, what else I did is I moved it back uh, here, which you can see I've got other holes. Really, it's about an inch. I moved it back. You're not going to notice an inch moving it back towards anything, and uh, it might not be quite a full inch, but... It gave me some room. I liked it. I'm going to do that with the other one too, with a good tray. But this is kind of giving you an idea of what you have to do to keep the tray up front. Uh, be cool. I think they advise that you move the battery to the trunk, which uh, some of you may be planning that anyway. I didn't want to do it. I, I, I like the battery up front for a lot of reasons, but you could do that and it would be just fine. You wouldn't have to mess with any of this. So the thing I would recommend to anybody considering an aluminum radiator period, uh, go big, whatever fits, the biggest you can get, the most capacity you can get, and guard them. This is after uh, 20, oh geez, power tour, and then, then a few months other. Um, but B-bodies don't have a lot of open frontal area, and it took a beating. So I'm going to have to figure out a, I mean, this, this one will be covered with an air condenser, uh, air conditioner condenser next round, but you can see I'd find a way to probably protect these a little bit if I could, because these are a significant investment. And, uh, you know, other than the rub here, I did that. Um, all the other stuff is bugs and road, road trash. Um, so protect them once you buy them, buy big and buy good. So that's my advice. So I can get a good mock-up view for you from the engine bay. As you can see, it's pretty tight. There's the frame rails. This hole right there was where those HVAC lines were supposed to come through. So I'm not completely convinced I would have had enough room anyway. Um, just food for thought for you guys using Be Cool and vintage air stuff and not expecting to modify. Uh, if you're looking at the face of the shroud and the, let me get even with it, this surface right here off the inner core support, this is about six and an eighth. Um, I'm gonna say if, if the fan is a hair proud, it might be, I, I'd go six and a quarter safely for this whole setup. You can't really get any closer because if you look closely here, there's a uh, body line or a body uh, stiffening rib that, sorry about that, tapes in the way, that's holding that's holding the radiator away a little further. And I just don't think there's much you're going to be able to do about it. We did, uh, we did get the condenser installed. Um, I like it. I like where it's at. I think it's going to be fine. It takes up a lot of that space. Hopefully that will make for some really nice, cool cruising. Um, you can't really see much after it gets dark down there, but, uh, there's the lower section that I'm going to run out somewhere into the inner fender and there's the upper and, uh, 
somewhere in that area right there is where those guys are going to come through and run along the top of the center fender here uh, and go back to their their correct hardware. There's the passenger side view of the Be Cool install, just in case you're wondering what that looks like. There's a little more room on this side. So um, there you go. I really hope this helps you guys. Um, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. I'll do what I can to get back to you. And uh, good luck. I hope I hope this helps.